Welcome back. Tip it on the side. The most watched spin off show on Five Star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or at least it will be until, until someone has the good sense to line up Robson Green for Oh My Cod Extreme Fishing 2. Uh, right, so another action-packed week of freakouts and fallouts. Will they ever stop? I don't think they're going to. Uh, here to make sense of it all is the delightful Dr Pam Spur. Yeah. So, Pam, uh, let's talk about... Uh, the noms reveal. Um, you have noticed some telling body language well, from yes. it, haven't you? In this... um, let's have a look at it and then we'll have a chat about it. Ashley. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> and Sarah. We're fucking all up. <laughs> <laughs> all up. <laughs> it's so Apart from one. Oh, yeah, that's what I was just saying. And. Lucas. That's weird. Okay, so what did you notice, Pam? Well, the thing is, those stressful situations reveal default stress behaviours. That is body language that our subconscious mind controls. We don't control it. So what we saw first with Ashley was this kind of, uh, going back to kind of infantile, sort of girly, like sort of rolling her head, not knowing quite how to cope with it. Yeah. This is her first time up as well, so it's a exactly. new thing for her to do. with. And did you see it was Connor who went to comfort her, not Luke S, because Luke S was so focused at that time, listening who's next. So it just shows the depth of his, or lack of depth of his feelings for her. And is that because he's so competitive, do you think? Oh, yeah. Or because you don't I, really think there's much? I think there's two things. He's so competitive, absolutely, that all he wants to know is what is the next you know, name that's going to be called out. And, of course, we've seen recently the behaviour with each other where, you know, he's not that inter. We know from the agent's task that he'd rather be out doing the Hollywood Knights Bachelor thing. So, come on, it's, it's no surprise that he didn't come for her straight away. OK, and what about Sarah? Well, Sarah did that instant pseudo sort of, um, you know, sort of grin. You can, everybody can see it. Even she realised it, but that was her first reaction. She wanted to cover her genuine feelings of shock because I don't think Sarah expected to be nominated. And so immediately she starts giggling because even she could feel yeah. when she'd done that pseudo grin that it was, it was very fake. I was quite surprised by uh, by Sarah actually because I didn't think she would receive a nomination. She's she's kind of been plain sailing so far. Well, she has. She's been one of the ones who's not caused a lot of conflict, except of course when she stuck up for Dina with with Adam. But otherwise, she has. She's been kind of there to facilitate others and not really sort of get into trouble herself. Yeah, um, we've seen lots of uh, different approaches um, amongst the housemates with regard to this week's nominations. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's have a look at a few of them. Bex has been really nice to me. To you? Mm-hmm. Connor asked me if I was feeling better. Made some well, joke about just a cafeteria. People go mad on Sunday, don't they? Mm. Do they seriously think it's going to make a difference? I really don't know. I think this must be stupid if they think that. How much fun is it going to be tomorrow, Adam? I'm not Connor. It's not one of my favourite days. It's not my favourite day at all, so... I don't know how it's going to be. I could probably say I'm a little worried. Yeah, Monday's my favourite day. <laughs> I, I find Mondays are very interesting, you know what I mean? Tomorrow, um, when it comes down to it, you're going to whittle it down to two people who you have to nominate. So you'll see different people will be staying away from certain people. So what differences do you see? Well, immediately you see with Adam, there he was, you know, wiggling his fingertips. He was so nervous. His fingertips were doing all the speaking. And he said so, too. It's not his favourite day, like Connor. Yeah. Connor has this kind of hyper-alpha male attitude towards it. It's very goal-directed. He wants to cut through all the emotional stuff of noms. He sees it very straightforward, and I think he also has an overinflated sense of confidence. He doesn't think he's going to be up. Do you think that comes from the fact that he's been saved twice before. Exactly, and also the fact that he knows there are people in the house who adore him, you know, so he's got the Carolina adoration, he's got the Becky adoration, you know, he's got that sort of quite solid base there, and he doesn't realise there are quite a few other housemates who actually really don't like him and feel quite, quite strongly that they'd like him out. Okay, um, what's the healthiest approach to have? 
Oh, definitely the healthiest approach is what I call that sort of cautious optimism. If the 24 hours leading up to the norms, you're kind of being quite optimistic, it creates a comfort zone around you and the other housemates who are maybe harboring little grudges against you actually kind of start to, those grudges sort of drop away if they kind of feel this good vibe for you. But it's got to be cautious because, Emma, you cannot come across as cocky like, oh, you're not going to put me up, are you? So it's a real fine balance there to strike and I think that's the best attitude. OK, let's talk about um, the two divisions that are in the house. Um, what makes the two groups so different, do you think? Well, if we look to something called attachment theory, this is a theory of how people relate to each other. So you and I might have secure attachment and you and I would have a really strong relationship or you can have insecure attachment which is all about negative bonding it's about outward bitching who am I describing the outsiders now the thing about the outsiders is with their insecure attachment the insiders so, sorry the insiders, the yes. insiders with the insiders right. with their with their insecure attachment they're actually quite happy to see group members behave negatively. So Caroline delivers regularly what I call her barbed wire sandwiches, which makes the insiders laugh. That is well. She'll, What's a barbed wire sandwich? <laughs> well, in one breath, she'll say to something like to Dina, like, "You're lovely, Dina." No, you're doing it all wrong, Dina. You're lovely, Dina. She's got the barbed wire kind of, kind of criticism right in the middle of that sandwich. Right. Don't let me near the Caroline Bakery. I don't want to go there. But all the insiders love it. They love the way she causes confusion and conflict. So, so that describes them. There we have the outsiders who are securely attached. So do you not really buy any of the friendships in, in the insiders I think there group? are some genuine strands of friendship, but they're very fragile because look at the amount of banter they do compared to real genuine conversation. There's a lot of banter, a lot of self-deprecation. Caroline, again, classic example when she did the repelling boys manual. So she had Connor and everybody laughing at her right. to forge her bond in the group. So she's having to self-deprecate, criticize herself okay. to, be, to be popular with them. The opposite, of course, is the outsiders who have secure bonding. They have genuine nurturing. They support each other. They don't look to bitch outwards. Instead, they kind of just defend themselves when they can feel the right. bitching coming towards them. Okay. Uh, now, tonight we saw a, a rather awkward moment between Ashley and uh, Lucas. If you're not sure of the moment I'm talking about, we'll just remind ourselves. You're going to be playing spy. Huh? Thanks, boy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so talk us through um, what you're getting from their body language. Well, first, I'm looking for a knife because I want to cut through that atmosphere. What we're seeing is tentative bonding. It's approach avoidance. So in psychological terms, they don't really know after the rocky road they've had over the last week whether to kind of approach each other or avoid each other. So this is what happens. It's played out in their body language. When Lucas looks at Ashley to make one of these kind of banal comments, she looks away. When he, she looks at him, he looks away. It's Do you so think so they don't know whether to approach each other. How she's feeling um, then, though, because that was around the time of the whole Dina thing when she'd been quite upset about her not getting her letter and. Oh, she's so yeah, absolutely. She was already deflated because of that. But this sort of behaviour was going on prior to that, where you would see they didn't quite know how to bond anymore. They've lost that kind of sexual chemistry that they had. And okay. let's face it, Lucas was had, was such a such a horny guy that it was always very physical between them and very much. In sync, but now it's not. Dr. Pam just said horny. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> you I just never what? expected it to come out of your mouth. <laughs> uh, Dr. Pam, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, earlier we exclusively revealed the housemates' reactions when they found out that a whopping eight of them are up for a, a, a eviction. Uh, would you like to see the latest? Yeah. Yes. Lucas, was a shock to both of you guys? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't a shock to me. Sure. Yeah, it was a shock to me as well, OK. It was a shock. It was a shock. It wasn't a shock to me. It wasn't a shock? No. No, OK. Tina, you're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a shock, it wasn't a shock. It wasn't oh, a shock. Oh, shock. You, we can totally see what you're doing to try to figure this out. It's out. So why do you have to, why do you have to do that? Are you trying to fuck me up on purpose? I don't want to get in trouble for nothing. But you're not speaking. I wasn't speaking to you. I was talking to when Sarah. When it comes out of the loudspeaker, Dina, Adam, Sarah and Luke are sitting here with the conversation. Because I said, is it a shock? 
Regina. You, I, you're you getting abs- upset with me right I'm now because I stopped upset with you, you from doing. No, you didn't stop me. You, 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 you haven't something. stopped me from doing anything because I knew what I was saying. I wasn't saying anything wrong. I said, was it a shock? She, she didn't answer me. So when she answered answer. me, oh, you know, whatever, Adam. Yeah, yeah, I know whatever. what you're trying. Shh. Absolutely, whatever. Yeah, me. whatever. Because I told you to stop oh, doing something. Up. Whatever me. Just play clever all the time. Wow, phone in time, everybody. Thank you as ever for all of your messages. Uh, much like Caroline, I'm appalled by the housemates' common vocabulary. So tonight's band's, band words are toilet, serviette and lounge. But still, there's plenty to talk about, this being Noms Day and all. So who have we got first? We've got Lara from Derbyshire. Hello, Lara from Derbyshire. How are you? Oh, hi, Jamie. I'm fine. How are you? Very good. I am loving the spread of people up for nomination this week. I know, it's, it's good, like, isn't it? It's like a peopleicious buffet spread full of choices. It's wonderful. Wow, well yeah, said. Really, really loving it. And I'm really interested to see how the eviction newbies are going to react to the pressure of being up, in particular, Lush, or as we call them in this household, Lash. Lash? <laughs> Yeah, because you'd have to be out on the lash for a couple like that to form, I think, because they have, like, <laughs> nothing in common. Very good. <laughs> I think, like, it's like I, we were thinking how Luke S is going to act around Ashley and vice versa. Yeah. Is he going to push her away or is he going to bring her closer because he's completely thinking about how the public is seeing him? Well, there's a, very much, there's, a, just, there's a big danger that they're going to be split up, isn't there? Yeah, completely, you know, and there's big danger that one of them is going to find out either he's going to find out what the public feel like when he gets out or she's going to find out what happened during that prank when think, she gets out. Do you think he'll admit it to her before Friday? Oh, I think he should try to in a roundabout way. Would be would be amazing. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you. Bye. Who, bye. Who have we got on line two? We've got CJ from North Wales. Not LJ. No, CJ. <sighs> Hi, CJ. How are you? Hey, Jamie, dude. How are you? Yeah, man, I'm hanging like <laughs> cool, man. Hey, listen. North Wales? And blow, blow my wife a little kiss. I mean, she so fancies you. Your wife? Yeah. Like... That OK? Yeah, that's good, man. Good. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about last week's nominations. Let's. Yeah, or this, or even really this week's. Off, OK? Sorry, OK, go on. Yeah, I was really pissed off about that. Wow, why? It was wrong on so many levels, you know? OK, okay uh, I do, but maybe just tell me one of those levels. Well, one level was they all kind of ganged up. The, the baddies ganged up on the goodies, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They did. Uh, yeah, so, so I was going to suggest that the public nominate this week, but I see the Big Brother stepped up and done something and it's almost just as good. Who do you think is going to go? Oh, definitely Caroline, or my second pick would be uh, Connor. Connor, he's got a lot of fans, though, hasn't he? The whole of Derry seem to be uh, clicking on them votes. Yeah, well, you know. Carolina, though, then. OK, well, let's... Let, we should let's have a see. double nomination. We should. Well, maybe we will. Yeah, who double, kn- double. Who knows? Thank you very much. Out. Thank you very much for your call, CJ. Say hello hey, to your you. wife. Good North <laughs> Wales accent. Who have we got on line three? We've got Amber from London. Amber from London. Hello, Amber. Hello. Hello. Are you all right? Yes, fine, thank you. Good. What would you like to talk about? I'm actually just really gobsmacked that Becky is not up because all week they've been saying, oh, she's changed, she's been bitching, she's been doing this, and then nobody's bothered to even photo. She's managed to just sail through this, and I'm totally gobsmacked because she's been the most awful, awfulest housemate all week. You know, if she's not eating, she's bitching, and if she's not bitching, she's eating. Well, um, why do you think Luke A didn't, didn't nominate her? I think he actually felt bad because she made out that she was so, so, so upset and, you know, she can't believe and how dare he. But, but surely, she was only upset because he was telling the truth. But surely he would have he would have kind of acted like that in front of her. No, I, I think he kind of... He said what he said to her and then afterwards he kind of thought, well, I don't really want to fall out with her, so he tried to make amends. But everything he said was completely true and Becky just got angry because the truth hurt, basically. Well, I she... think she should be up next week. She's absolutely awful. Well, maybe she will be. She has dodged a bit of a bullet, but we will see. Thank you very much for your call, Amber. Right, that's enough of you lot for now. The phone room will be back again at the weekend. Back to you, Emma. Thanks, Jay. Uh, Still to come, we send Eugene up to the reality gallery and I'll be revealing all about Scott's sexy dreams. You don't want to miss it.